It seems to me that everybody that goes to Cyprus on a UN mission somehow ends up with a ferret. And it looks like you, uh, Sweden is no different. We did the same, yes. We had, we brought uh, on the picture up, up there, you can see the, the armored Swedish car that we had in Congo. And they also used them in, in the Middle East and they also brought, were brought to, to Cyprus. And together with them, the Swedish forces used um, ferrets on loan from the British to do patrol, patrolling. So I presume that, that the British had a lot of ferrets for the UN forces in Cyprus mm -hmm. and different countries. Just borrowed them out of yeah. the motor pool rental agency. I see the machine guns are different. So you've got Swedish machine guns on the KP and it looks like the original ferret machine gun is yes, on yes, different yes. ammunition and I'm sure that made life fun. Yeah, probably. Um, but uh, I suppose that they, they were supplied with, so it wouldn't be a, a big problem to get hold of it, but yeah. keeping different. <clears throat> but you, you had for the submachine guns, you had different for the automatic rifles for the, so there, there were already a lot of different ammunition. What, the what's one for, more? <laughs> so one more or less. So were these things used as independent patrols or were they used as escort vehicles for the other armored <clears throat> vehicles or do you know how they were used? Uh, they were used um, mostly as um, patrol vehicles and they, they had uh, one platoon traveling around uh, doing patrols and Maybe they were used as escort as well, but um, as far as I know, it's mostly patrol units doing uh, well, what they, that area that they had to, to cover. So you'd send two or three of these out at once and yeah, on, yeah. on their own, shall we say, just a platoon of two or three? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did, uh, you, when you were going around, especially, I guess this goes back to the Congo as well, the vehicle would occasionally get stuck. Uh, did you have any recovery issues, recovery assets? Um, Anything with a crane? Maybe, yeah, but I, that would have been uh, wheeled vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we had any armored or tracked uh, recovery vehicles uh, at the time because the Swedish Army didn't have anything on tracks at the time. Mm -hmm. So we had, uh, probably they were brought uh, from another unit. We, and we had both in, in Congo and uh, Cyprus, Middle East, we had other vehicles that came from elsewhere, British, American vehicles that were the, the soft skin vehicles, uh, Jeeps, uh, lorries, etc. So we didn't bring that much of our own vehicle at the time. We had a few that came, um, uh, patrol cars for, for radio equipment, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, yeah. But Jeeps, etc. Constant mix of different, and I think they were bought by the UN forces to be there, so they just continued to to use them instead of bringing their own equipment back and forth. Do you think they changed the radios? Would a British radio talk to a Swedish radio? That's a good question. I think they had the original British radio, but I'm not sure uh, and how they then communi communicated. Signal flares. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Um, or some remote station to, to, to bring in. Um, that's a good question. The little handheld radio set at the back, maybe. Maybe. Hmm. And I've spoken to a lot, lot of people. When we go out on, on different occasions and meet the veterans, uh, the ferret brings out a lot of memories from the people who have been there, seen it, or even been the crew members of it. So you take this guy out on events then? Yes, you, yeah, you to, transport to, around? Yeah, to, to, to show the vet veterans and it brings a lot of do you get Do you back. get to drive it or do you have to put it on the back of a truck? Well, we cannot drive it all the way uh, because it's not road legal, but we can... Well, no, it's got lights, it's got a yes, steering wheel. Yes, yes, <laughs> shorter, shorter distance, no problem, but uh, on the big road, no. Is it fun to drive? It's a fantastic vehicle to drive with the pre-selected gearbox. Uh, it's fast, um, but you have the, the steering yeah, wheel. It's is kind of at, at, a, at an odd angle. Yeah, so it, it's a bit different, but yeah. it's uh, really nice. But it's quite um, it's cramped and you don't have that much um, vision if you 
open up these you see a lot more but, but mm -hmm. and it's hard to stick your head out that way was there any fighting in Cyprus that the Swedes were involved in? No, I don't think there was a much, much fight. They were fighting, but uh, so they, they were, um, of course, they were... Caught in the middle. Uh, yeah, and there were a few casualties, but uh, uh, they were not part of that, so they, they tried to, to keep them separate. And I had a cousin myself who went there in, I think it was 73 or 74, when. Uh, the conflict broke Blew out, up, yeah. yeah, and we watch TV every every day to see who's next on the list, and that was. Uh, I could say I've been a little bit yeah, disconcerting. Yeah. Did you volunteer for UN mission? No, I was uh, part of training them before they went, but I haven't been on myself. Mm. All right, well, let's move on from the ferret and see what else you've got. It looks like everybody's using RGs today, and you guys are no exception. Yeah, we also have them. And they, this is the prototype of the RG32 made in South Africa. Um, we realized that we need to have an armored patrol car for foreign operations. And we had uh, Mercedes Gelendewagen with uh, armor protection, but mm -hmm. not that perfect vehicle for that kind of mission. So they went for this and this is, um, well, it's fairly okay, um, depending on what you're gonna do. So we have um, a number of them and they have been used in, in uh, several countries overseas, Afghanistan, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, they've been used quite a lot. It's, it's interesting the way that the patrolling has suddenly changed. Instead of the, the threat being people shooting at you, now it's everything's about landmines. Yes. And, and things that are coming up from the bottom, which is really what the RGs are supposed to be best at. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally, I find the RGs, we, we used the bigger ones in, uh, in, in Afghanistan. I found them incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah, they're not, not the best vehicle that I have dri driven. It's, uh, um, but uh, it's better than some of the else, the, the others. So, uh, well, it depends. Yeah, uh, and our other problem though is that once we bought thousands of thousands of these, of these what we call them MRAPs, so it's like the big family, it could be an RG, it could be a Dash, whatever. Thousands of MRAPs, all of a sudden, we realize that in anything, any other form of conflict, they're useless. And they're just sitting in storage or being sold off and given to police, whatever else. So. It's, it's a lot of money to spend on a specialized vehicle. Now, the Americans can do it because we just have money coming out of it. Mm. We, we solve all our problems with money, really, is mm. our issue. I would assume that a smaller country like Sweden would have more of a financial limitation on yes, specialty yes. vehicles like this. Yes. So now, now they are used in, in different units at home instead as just patrol cars, uh, even if they, they were designed and bought for the the missions abroad, so we, now we use them at home. And there are arguments about people who like them or hate them. So mm -hmm. there are different opinions, but that you can find anywhere. And if you, you read on the internet about all the bad vehicles that the Swedish army has, and if, for instance, if you say, well, we could have a Humvee, no, 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 Humvee, they are crap. Or the RG32, they are crap. And the question is, what would you like? <laughs> and there, are, there is no answer. Mm. Pe people have no answer because everything depends on who you are is crap or good. Well, what are you doing with it? Yes. Does, does the Swedish army have a day-to-day -day internal security role in Sweden? I mean, or when, when you say that they're using this domestically for patrols? Well, they have, they have for, the, for the home security if, if someone would attack us. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're doing a lot of training uh, with them uh, regularly, uh, but we don't have... But you wouldn't use it like uh, for special police issues, like a terrorist attack or something uh, like that? Not at the moment. Well, mm. if something really, really bad happened, but I hope that we will never be a, have to use the army uh, within Sweden. 
Do the Swedish police use armored vehicles? I mean, I presume yeah, they have they, some. They have a few. They have a few, yes, yeah. uh, but uh, only for very special, uh, special mission. And I, not, I presume not you should probably should get one here. I mean, it's a Swedish armored vehicle. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I don't know how many they are, but not, not, not many. And I think that. The but, but they're not former army ones that got sent over. They're special purpose they're built. They're special purpose mm. built. Uh, we they had uh, a long time ago. They had. Uh, former armored vehicles uh, from the from the army but they never used them they had them as a in case in of, case, in case yeah. of yeah but people didn't talk about having <laughs> armored cars with 20 millimeter guns on it against who i don't know the gendarmerie might have had a few <laughs> i don't want that kind of situation in this country <laughs> Okay, well, yeah. I think we've, uh, we've about run out of UN vehicles, so, well, it's an interesting tour. Yeah, and thank you for your time. If you like this film, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and there you can find more interesting vehicles.